Hello guys, hope you are having a good day and you are watching Tech University, I am Divyansh Agrawal. Today in this video, we are going to talk about a program that is offered by University of Toronto which goes by the name MSCAC or Master of Science in Applied Computing. So, uh, I will tell you all about the program overview, how to apply the program fees, what to expect from this program, what are the scope after this program and about the scholarship as well. So, please uh, stick to the last of this video uh, in order to know everything about this program if you are willing to go abroad and study in University of Toronto. So, before moving into the course, let's just talk a little bit about University of Toronto and I will go to University of Toronto. Uh, I do believe QS rankings are good. So, yeah, let's just look at this University of Toronto's top university side. You can see the rank is 26 in the world. So, it's a really, really good rank. The research output is really high. Look at the student to faculty ratio 8. You will never gonna find this in India for sure. They do provide scholarships. They have a lot of number of international students in their campuses. They have three campuses spread across uh, uh, Toronto. Uh, there is this St. George campus, which is the main one uh, located in downtown Toronto. So let's just move ahead with the course. So uh, this for this program, they have given four concentrations, namely computer science, data science, applied mathematics and quantum computing. But in this video, we are just going to talk about data science concentration. So for data science concentration, as we click on that link, it provides you, it lands you on a, a program requirements page. They say that you have to complete two uh, courses from computer science department, two courses from statistical department, and you have to complete two mandatory courses, which are communications for computer sciences and technical entrepreneurship. Uh, these are professional courses and you have to complete an eight month industrial internship and uh, this is evaluated by the department on a pass and fail basis uh, either you pass or fail in this course so uh, then they say what is data science i probably don't need to explain what this is uh, because you're watching this video for sure you you might want to go for masters in data science so i'm not going to explain this uh, they have given a uh, brief eligibility requirements on this page as well, which is that you have to have an appropriate undergraduate degree in computer science, mathematics or statistics or any other discipline which includes coursework from advanced calculus, linear algebra, probability and statistics, programming languages and computational methods. You have to have a degree uh, which uh, in which you have scored at least B plus in, in your final year. So make sure uh, you perform really well in your final year. You need to have grade of B plus or a percentage of 77 to 79% in your final year undergraduate study. And uh, there is a requirement of the English language proficiency as well. Uh, they have given a page of their requirements. So let's go into that. Here, uh, they have given four tests. Uh, on which uh, they accept your English language proficiency. TOEFL and IELTS are all, uh, again, you know, the very well-known tests, but they have included two more tests, which goes by the name of COPE, uh, Certificate of Proficiency in English, and CAEL, Canadian Academic English Language Assessment. So as for TOEFL, uh, in this course, specifically for this course, you need to have an overall IBT score of 93 out of 120, and a score of 22 for reading, uh, writing and speaking out of 25. And uh, for IELTS, uh, you need a score of 7 uh, out of 9 with at least 6.5 for each component. So if you, even if you fail to get 6.5 in any of the four uh, segments that IELTS consists of, uh, you will, uh, they will not be moving forward with your uh, candidature. Then there is third COPE uh, certificate. Uh, you need to have a minimum of 76 uh, with 22 in each component and 32 in the writing component part. For KL, you need to have a minimum of 70 uh, with at least 60 in each part. A minimum of 70 and 60 they require for each part. So these were the English language profici uh, uh, proficiency requirements. Uh, you need to showcase your knowledge in at least two of these courses. Uh, applied regression analysis, probability theory and statistical theory. And you have to have knowledge on algorithms and complexity, database systems and operating systems. You need to have the knowledge on this because they are going to take the interview before uh, offering you a seat in this program. So make sure uh, you are technically sound with these courses that they have provided. 
so after this let's just go how to apply uh, with this apply page and uh, if we see this page uh, the entry requirements is uh, common to all the concentrations uh, as I already told you you have to have English language proficiency B plus grade you have to have an undergraduate degree now we talk about this work experience so they say that work experience is preferred but not required whenever you see this kind of sentence in any of the university's website uh, make sure you make an assumption that they are looking for it so although they say is not required but when they say is preferred they are looking for that particular thing so yes uh, they do select uh, some people with no experience but uh, that number is really less uh, until and unless you are really exceptional case they've also given a tool uh, on their website through which you can uh, set an equivalency of your degree score with theirs so uh, let's go into it as well and particularly we are looking for India and they have segregated this all by the country so if we go to India they say that you have to have a CGP a minimum CGP of 8 out of 10 or 7.5 uh, if you are from an IIT so there is a relaxation of, a relaxation of 0 0.5 if you are belonging to an IIT and uh, uh, they require a bachelor's degree with a minimum of four years of study but if you have a bachelor's degree with a three years of study you need to have a master's then only you can apply for this particular course so either you have a four-year degree which is essentially a B pharma or uh, B tech or B engineering or B architecture or something like that uh, but if you are from BSc statistics or some other course like that or any other BSc courses you need to have a master's degree then only you can apply for this program okay apart from that you have to submit some documents to them which says you have to submit academic transcripts of your previous uh, education you have to upload your resume you have to uh, upload a statement of purpose I believe this is the most important document uh, while applying to any university abroad because it uh, lets you explain things that you haven't done in the resume that is on a more personal level and uh, they are asking for three referrals as well uh, make sure your referrals are strong maybe from the professors who are already established it can be from employers as well uh, if you have any work experience uh, they have given a, a requirement of the english language proficiency test scores and for gre scores they have given a separate link let's let's uh, explore it a little as well so there is a question in the FEQ page they say that do I need to send the GRE scores well they say if you don't belong to a Canadian University then you must uh, submit a GRE score although they say it's not mandatory to do so but they do strongly encourage us to send these scores as it will strengthen your application so again this comes uh, uh, this comes an assumption that you have to uh, go through a GRE score unless you are not from a Canadian University right and uh, they are also asking for any other relevant information that you would like to share with the admissions committee like if you want to talk about your research papers your projects maybe you would like to share your github link and all and uh, this is it i mean as for the requirements that they have uh, given so let's take a little view on program overview as well so uh, they have given the technical course requirements which includes courses uh, from this the students can choose from courses from these courses that I have highlighted here and there's this professional courses that I've already told you about these two courses communication for computer scientists and technical entrepreneurship and a mandatory applied research internship in a firm a partner uh, to University of Toronto if we talk about the application process the application process involves uh, three steps basically uh, you have to apply directly to University of Toronto School of Graduate Studies also known as STS so at this stage you don't need to provide SOPs resumes and referrals all you have to do is just apply simply and uh, once you pay the application fees you will be receiving a mail with the uh, login credentials to their own graduate application system uh, where you have to upload all these documents GRE scores statement of purpose and all these and finally if you are shortlisted from the step two you will be having an interview with one or more members from the program team and uh, this is the step where you need to make sure you rock it and uh, uh, they are going to take interview on technical and uh, 
technical aspects on personal aspects as well and uh, most importantly uh, whether or not you will be a good fit for the program um, in university of toronto or not so if you talk about the program fees the program fees is 24000 canadian dollars for domestic students of course we are not talking about domestic students here but it's a very hefty amount for international students is 61000 canadian dollars which uh, roughly estimates to 37 lakhs so but but the thing is uh, after that you will be having no lack of opportunities you will be having a hell lot of opportunities with a larger uh, base pay because this university and this course is particularly well recognized and well established in uh, canadian industry so uh, you don't need to worry about that once you get this degree you will not be worrying about uh, how much you paid for the masters program and uh, as for uh, the september intake they uh, they have closed for september 2021 intake but for september 2022 intake uh, they have uh, they will be opening the uh, admissions portal in october 21 so make sure uh, you remain active on this website uh, if you want to apply for the september 22 cohort and also they have given an admitted student profile so they have said that uh, the people belonging to these courses uh, have successfully been admitted to these courses there are a lot of courses from which people are coming of course data science uh, is a budding field and uh, they do say that their prior work experience they do give a lot of weightage to prior work experience uh, here as well they have written it so uh, i would suggest you if you are looking for this particular course maybe you should work for maybe 2 years or 3 years down the line and then you can apply for uh, this course uh, that way your profile will be much stronger and also make sure if you are in the first or second year uh, of your bachelor's make sure that you are technically and academically sound because canadian universities are believed to be academically oriented that means that you need to have an excellent academic record throughout your bachelor's degree on the contrary american universities are believed to be more research oriented so this is where all the difference comes in in the canadian and american universities the canadian universities tend to give more weightage to academics rather than research but they do also uh, appreciate the research work as well so you need to make sure you have some work experience a prior work experience finally they have given a page uh, for their industry partners as well and uh, if we talk about uh, scholarships uh, we have the scholarships uh, as well in this uh, particular uh, program uh, that they offer so uh, here are the pages that they have given for graduate scholarship and financial aid financial aid is just for the domestic students so we're going to look for the graduate scholarships so here is the page which states all the uh, scholarship programs that are run by the university of toronto overall so you can you can search for uh, the scholarship that suits you best there are a hell lot of scholarships that they gave you can see i was just scrolling and scrolling so there are a lot of scholarships you can check out from and uh, they also uh, give a filter by degree type they also filter by citizenship if you are an international citizen you can always look out for international and degree type you if you are applying for masters this particular course uh, you will have to look for masters so you can always look out for these scholarships so that was it all about uh, this course so if you like this video please uh, press the like button do subscribe the channel i will continue to post videos in which i will be telling you about more data science courses throughout the world and which universities and which uh, departments uh, offer the best data science courses till then adios